Uh, call for a vote on that. All those in favour say aye. 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 Contrary, no. Declare that carried. Thank you. Now we'll go to the report itself, and um, it's item 10, page 15, and the author is Megan, Megan Tyler. Um, in your hands, Megan. Good morning, Mr Chair. Councillors, members, uh, I'll be very brief. We've obviously started discussing it. So this really is part of a, of a bigger piece of work underway between Auckland Council, Auckland Transport and Waikato staff um, around particularly the northern Waikato. So I guess Huntley northwards, maybe even kind of Hamilton northwards and, and the boundaries and where it connects in with our southern part of the Auckland region. Um, NZTA, uh, the Transport Agency is obviously also involved as well. And as you know, as we've heard already, the last consideration or major consideration of, of the rail link between Auckland and Hamilton was in 2011. There's um, the attachment to my report, which is effectively the, the, the meat of, of the discussion today, um, has been written by the Waikato Regional Council, and it summarises kind of the key aspects of that 2011 report. In summary, it says that under, for today's conditions, that report or the, the proposal that came out of that is really no longer feasible, uh, and that there's a proposal then to do some more work in order to uh, see what would need to be done, issues like funding, um, stock availability, the logistics of how it could actually work, um, and even the demand. So an updated um, understanding of demand, a customer demand both from Auckland and Hamilton, would be required. And so this report uh, really um, agrees that Auckland Council should be part of that uh, work um, to do that high level study around understanding today's conditions, um, recognising there are some constraints and some of them have been already brought out in the, in the discussion this morning. Uh, that doesn't mean it won't happen, but there are some significant uh, constraints that need to be dealt with. Um, funding is one of them as well. Uh, and that, of course, any uh, report comes back to this committee. Um, Councillor Newman raised a question around growth and land use in the northern Waikato area, and so I guess I'm just putting that in context that there is proposal for growth on the other side of the border, around Tuako, Pocono, those kind of things, and so that is, that's that bigger piece of work that we're, that we're working on with our Waikato colleagues, um, and so that does form part of the context of, of this discussion. Um, and Councillor Simpson raised ratepayer funding or, or the, some of the funding. Again, you'll see in that 2011 report the, the expectation is that it would be ratepayer funded. Uh, the question of government funding, as we've already raised, could come um, at a later date if it, if it goes through a, a PBC, a, a, you know, a, a performance business case. So um, they're all kind of up in the air, but that's really where it landed kind of in 2011. I'm happy to answer questions. Oh, sorry, could I just say my eight, my Auckland Transport colleagues um, are still on leave today, so they're here in spirit but not with me. So if I can't answer questions, I will need to take them away and I'll <coughs> certainly come back to you. Thank you. Just before we go there, if we look at the report that went to, um, that went to the Waikato Regional Council, didn't it? Um, oh, it went to all the councils. Um, the one that's dated 12th of April, 17. Yep. And then if we look at those options, do nothing, prepare a detailed rail feasibility, and then three is develop a strategic business case. Can you just reconcile those three with your three recommendations? The, the wording's slightly different. Yes, it is. And I, um, so my recommendation is to this committee is to do a high-level review rather than using the, the the word strategic um, framework or strategic business case. I spoke with um, Annika from the Regional Council who, who was going to be here today, and, and I'm not putting words in her mouth or anything like that, um, but she was comfortable with the, with the wording of the recommendation, is that um, I believe that there probably needs to be some more fundamental higher level work done first before um, yeah. energy and cost and time is put into something more formal um, into like a business case proposal. So this is the step before a business case. It seems to me that there are enough questions and changes in the environment that that needs to be done first. And so that is my recommendation to you. So the direction that you're recommending, Megan, is that effectively a pre-feasibility? 
Yes, it would, it would lead into a feasibility study. And my understanding is the Waikato Regional Council um, supported um, the wording of the, around the strategic business case wording. Um, it wouldn't, what I'm recommending isn't contrary to that. If there is more work <coughs> that needs to be done, then that would flow on in, into a business case. So, okay, well, guess what I'm trying to draw out here? I'm conversing with pre-feasibilities before you move into feasibility, or can transport has indicative business cases before you move into business cases. Yeah. And NZTA has four gateways, and you need to go through the gateways. So is this, what you're recommending, <coughs> is it effectively that indicative business case backslash pre-feasibility first gateway yes. NZTA? Yes. And there is an expectation from NZTA, who are our partner in this, that you go through the first gateway first. You don't go straight to the second gateway. Yes, that's the way they operate. That's their <coughs> expectation of operation, yep. Okay, thank you. Questions from members? Councillor Cashmore. Yes, <coughs> thanks, Megan. Just one very quick question. You might not be able to answer. Has the regional council in the Waikato put any money aside for subsidising the fares of mm. any potential service? I don't know the answer, but I'm happy to find out. Councillor Newman. Megan, you probably won't be able to answer this either then, because uh, have you, are you familiar with the Waikato Regional Public Transport Plan? That's the current plan in relation to integral services and what they've said about the medium to long term priority for this? I know that they're, under, they're undertaking a review, that's my understanding, and in fact I think they're giving the Franklin Local Board um, yeah. maybe a heads up on that uh, today. Right now, yeah. Yeah. Um, <coughs> that's public, public transport broadly, not just rail. But I don't know the details of, of this, of where they're at right now. I'll, I'll reserve for comment, Mr Chair. Thank you. Councillor Cooper. Thank you. Just, yes. the main trunk line isn't electrified, is it, and there's no commitment to do that. Is that correct? Correct. <coughs> so I guess yeah, so I suppose that's part of my question is, well, how does that work then if we have an electrified line? And so that, will that be part of a study? Oh, yeah. I mean, those are the sort of things that they're already in there anyway. Yes. But, um, I suppose what I'm asking is, what more are we going to get out of what we've already, than what we've got now? And what we don't tend to do in our reports is to ever talk about financial implication of our staff time, which I would really love to see. So have you got any idea of hours, we would, is this actually in our work plan already? Long yeah, or is this another add-on which we keep piling on? Mm. Good idea, yeah. chuck that one in. It's my it is an add-on, so it's not in our work programme at the moment. So do we have enough staff to do it, <coughs> and what will it take away from? So we will make resources available um, if this is something that the committee wishes us to do. And we think, or I think, <laughs> that it is, a, um, it is worth doing to partner with our, our colleagues in the other, uh, with the Waikato Council. It may or may not be as important a priority, mm -hmm. who knows, for us as it is for them, um, but the work um, should be, or could be done. We haven't got a terms of reference yet or, or a scope of how big this work is, so I, I think that is important to know what that is. It could be as big or as... As, as specific as we want it to be. And I guess, um, I think, and you can see in the reports, I think there's some, clearly some key issues to look at, which could be reasonably narrowly focused, which would then um, put us onto a path of doing more work or, or not. Can I so. just ask another? So is the Waikato, any of the Waikato <coughs> councils going to put time and money into this? Or, yes, or, or is it all going to be on Auckland? No, they, they will. So we'll work together. Um, again, we, we don't know how much it's going to cost because we don't know what the scope is, um, but there's an expectation that we would share that cost. So yes, there will be a funding implication for us even to do this, let alone anything bigger. Um, exactly, and that's what worries me. Yep. So we've already are, been asked to make cuts in operations, which this is, and then, yeah, OK, thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Mike Lee. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, Megan. Good morning. I, I haven't seen you in a transport role before, but may I ask who uh, told you that there is no suitable rolling stock immediately available for a Hamilton to Auckland commuter service? That's my advice from Auckland Transport colleagues. Okay. Thank you. Yep. I thought so. 
Member Nunnery. <laughs> that, that may well have answered my question, I'm not sure, but um, is that a fact that it, within the Māori Impact Statement, the, the comment that's made that uh, the passenger rail service between Hamilton and Auckland will not affect Māori in any greater way than the population generally? Like, do we know that? Is there information There's on been that? No, so I just wanted to make it clear, in terms of doing my report, and as far as I understand even the 2011 report, I don't believe there was any specific um, consideration of impact on Māori as part of that, and certainly it's not part of the report that I did, given that the scope, though, of this work, should it be done, I believe, should include uh, an, a better understanding of that, whether, in fact, that is correct or, or if there is any particular impact on Māori. It, it's pretty lazy, though. Mm. That, that statement is pretty lazy. Hey. Okay, we'll, we'll take that back and we'll, can we check up on that? So, one? so I mean, just, just to see... If there's no plan done. There's co confirmation that if... We it's do amazing. go to that high level um, view that there will be some kind of information sought on that you want. Yeah, I'll, I'll certainly make sure that it'd be part of the scope of the work. Thank you. Councillor Walker. Sure. Um, would it be possible to put together some form of collaborative group to advance and accelerate this project? And I, I say that because my view is that there's widespread public support I'd suggest that across many companies uh, there would be um, an interest in putting some time and effort into a project like this without necessarily uh, any cost. Um, there are companies in the energy space, um, of which there are a number, companies in the battery technology uh, space, uh, of which there's at least one I can think of. So I just put it to you that in an instance like this, a collaborative approach might work very well. I think that's, that's what something we've got. that has we've been got, considered. We've got um, num what we've got four councils: NZTA, Kiwi Rail, um, a lobby group. So there is definitely collaboration happening. My inclination would be to go somewhat broader than that. Uh, there are companies in the transport space, the energy space, the rail space, and others that could have an interest and could accelerate this project and make sure that costs aren't and a, a reason for sitting on our um, on our haunches. Thanks. That's a great op um, option. Thank you. Noted. And Councillor Casey. Uh, who are the four councillors? You've almost answered my question. Well, they're in the report there. Hamilton City, Waikato District, Waikato Regional. No, no, the names of the Auckland, the Auckland councillors. Who, who represented Auckland? Um, yeah. Yeah. At that particular one, uh, no, that's the report dated 12th of April and it's addressed to us. The Mayor attended the North Island Strategic Alliance Group. Is that where this was raised also, Megan? Uh, yes, so the, well, the first time was back in 2016. Sorry, I've got the date. No, beginning. Um, July, so that was uh, then Mayor uh, Len Brown. Uh, and Andy Baker, who was chair of the... Franklin Local Board at that stage. I don't recall, I don't think Councillor Cashmore was there at that meeting. Um, and those were the political representatives and then Jim Quinn from the staff. Stayed away from that. It was also Watercare um, was there and Auckland Transport as well. From staff, yeah. And it's also been raised separately, I believe, at the UNISA up in North Island Strategic I believe license. so. That it's been raised separately with the Mayor, but I wasn't. Yeah, you know, I don't know details of that. I can answer that. So, Deputy yes, Mr. Mayor. Chair, you're correct. At UNISA, there is, because I am now part of that with Mayor Goff, and it has been raised, not just rail, but road and all other forms of interface between the Waikato and Auckland. So, it's an ongoing piece of work with UNISA, and <coughs> dare I say, this party part needs to roll in with that. But there are some real, very real practical challenges which I want to speak to. Um, okay. Thank you. There are the questions, um, members. We, we've got a, um, an amendment. I think I'm happy to incorporate that in the motions. Mm. I think it's, it's got a caveat on it. It's in principle. Um, I recall. At our Auckland Plan refresh workshops, again, they were just informal workshops, but it was 
was raised at those workshops, the improved rail connectivity between Auckland and Hamilton. Nothing's formalised out of that, but it was socialised, it was mentioned, and I expect it to come back in future workshops. So before I do so, members, and incorporate it, um, is there any... I just want to get a sense of any opposition to it being incorporated. It's the words, please look at the words, in principle. That does not uh, give us permission to attack this sort of carte blanche. There's a, a lot of gateways to go through. Um, I'll ask Councillor Cooper in the first instance and then yeah, Councillor Newman. If we're talking about principles, for me, I, I could possibly vote for A to D, but then saying we support it in principle kind of indicates an impetus to this that it will keep moving on and keep moving on and I don't want it to come back to us that we supported it in principle and now we're not going ahead and I, that's what concerns me is that there's a hot, hell of a lot of my principles that wouldn't allow me to even look at this mm -hmm. because we're elected for our region and we've got a huge amount of issues we, we, that are much higher priority and we're not dealing with. Yes, it's wonderful but... You know, I couldn't just say, yeah, go ahead, because I know it's going to cost money, it's going to be extra. You know, all the things that we're wanting to do in our own region that we're not doing. And then we say, oh, go ahead and do this. And we know that we're the big brother, so to speak, the big sister, the big, that it always more costs will fall on us. So I find that hard to support it in principle for what it means. Okay, what I'm going to, to do work. is I'm going to allow the, the mover and the seconder to formally move it. Uh, I'll take that as being on the table now, and I'll treat it as an amendment. I'll take the amendment first. I'm uh, sorry, I need to move the primary motion, so yes. I'll, I'll move the primary motions A to D. Do I have a second for A to D? <coughs> Councillor Walker. And now the amendment is moved and seconded, and I'll allow the mover, I believe, to speak to the amendment only at this stage. Yeah, this, the key words in the amendment are in principle. This is just about what we want to happen over the next 50 years in Auckland. Well, let's hope it's not 50 years, but I would like to see A, rail to the airport. I'd like to see B, rail to Whangarei, and C, I'd like to see rail to Hamilton. This is about making Auckland accessible to our moving populations and that nothing, nothing more and nothing less. So to put up objections to in-principle support defies belief. So I would imagine it should, be, well, it should be unanimous. This is just about where we want Auckland to be, folks. Nods. Yep. I think we should space travel. To the Thank you. Do I have uh, something else? Okay. Um. Oh, Councillor Cooper, I've got your name appearing again. Have you already... Spoken. No. Thank you. No, sorry. Are, are you now asking for debate? Yes, Just on the amendment. I, yes, I would like. No, not on the amendment. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Councillor Newman, on the amendment. I think, uh, Mr. Chair, it's it's very difficult to be dog in a manger around this, but you have to come back to what the Waikato Regions Regional Public Transport Plan said about this. I've just been trying to read it at haste, and. Um, I'll just read the relevant section from page 27. The 2015-45 RPTP has identified that this service, I'm referring to this passenger train service, that this service is a medium to long-term priority for the Waikato region. And the interim Waikato should support Auckland Council, Auckland Transport and Kiwi Rail in any Auckland initiatives that will remove the constraints to the viable service. Um, and I think that, and the, they referred to the third, the third rail line. And I look at the contracted services in the RPTP, which is always the most interesting thing. That's where you see a, re, a community in the region identify what are its priorities to fund. And it identifies uh, for Northern Waikato services, Tuakau to uh, Pukekoe, um and Port Waikato to Pukekoi, and those services are not frequent. I mean, that's the extent to which that region has identified its public transport priorities for the northern Waikato. Uh, I defer to the RPTP. It's been through a process. I think that, you know, look, it's very nice to be able to put up resolutions like this, Cathy, but I'm afraid um, that I don't think that the 
that the patronage would justify it, uh, and the Waikato region hasn't the Waikato region hasn't justified it. Maybe it will in the future, but I'd kind of like to get on with our priorities first, mm -hmm. like extending uh, rail services to Pukekoe, which I think is desperately needed. About trying to improve the efficiency of our existing network. Um, every part of the Auckland region needs public transport services. I haven't seen anyone actually come forward and identify how we're going to fund beyond our region yet. So I won't be supporting this amendment. Thank you. Look, I'll just speak briefly to the amendment. I'm going to support the amendment and I take the words um, in principle. I emphasise those words and then you need to read that if this is incorporated, if it's passed and incorporated, then you need to read it, those words alongside the C, where we say um, the rail service between Hamilton and Auckland is a low priority for Auckland Council at this point in time. So there's a further caveat there. And uh, just as Waikato Regional has viewed it, if I can take your words quoting from their documents, their planning documents, as a medium to long term, <coughs> it could be the same for us. This does not call uh, a whole lot of project, or this project forward and others uh, be pushed out, by no means whatsoever. And I take the point of Councillor Cooper, and I think all of us, we know we're going to have to double down on some real core responsibilities. Uh, this may or may not proceed in the medium term. Um, but um, I'm going to support the uh, amendment as it is, but c read it in line with uh, the C. It's important. Uh, I'll go now to Councillor Hulse. Thank you, Mr Chair. I, I think that last statement of yours was important. The, the issue that, that we're all grappling with is trying to kind of keep a 30-year time frame when some of this might be important or relevant and at the same time dealing with the immediacy of the Swanson to Kumu Huapai rail network which is utterly critical and you know that particularly for Councillor Cooper and I that that's where our focus is you know people can barely get down the any of our motorways we're seeing the busways pushed out we're in a complete shamozzle in the northwest and the idea of then you know focusing down south and leading um, more suburban bleed down down to the southern area causes me concern. If, however, this is a serious look at joining our two regions in a way that makes sense, I am I can't say I'm overly enthusiastic about either the amendment nor the substantive motions. I'm not going to vote against them, but I, I think just raising that flag of concern that in all the priorities we've got, this is fairly low down the list. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Watson. Uh, th thank you, Mr Chair. <coughs> yeah, I, uh, I support the amendment. I, I think, um, and I think um, Member uh, Henare made a good point uh, in terms of how things have changed so dramatically over the last couple of years in terms of uh, population growth, um, and in terms of um, congestion down in the south, I think m most people that have travelled overseas would, and, and certainly people that come to New Zealand from overseas would, would probably find it very difficult to understand that you know there's not a rail link between Auckland and Hamilton. I mean, <laughs> you just you just assume that would be something that have, would have happened long ago, and between Auckland and Whangarei for that that matter too, the same applies. Um, all we're doing here, I think, is. Uh, and you have uh, stated it very clearly, Mr. Chair, is, is, is saying this is an in principle support for um, a service that many people in the public wonder why it's not, you know, it's not on the table now. We know what our financial constraints are, and I'd imagine most people around New Zealand, not least of which is the government and other council, are aware of them as well. Yeah. So, so I don't think there's going to be any. Uh, <laughs> sense that we'll, we'll be abandoning any projects that are on the go or in the pipeline to address this. But it is important. It, it is something that should be, should be happening, that should be on the radar. Um, if the, you know, the 45,000 net gain in population is going to continue in Auckland, it, it's, it's going to acquire a, a momentum 
uh, more so than it has even in the last couple of years. So I think this is, this is wise, a wise move to, to, to make it clear to whoever might be out there that yes, the Auckland Council supports us. It hasn't obviously got the financial wherewithal to, to take it on to a, to a large extent, but it does support it. It is something that should be happening, should have happened. Um, and let's bring people together and see what, what maybe comes out of it. We, we, we might be surprised. Who knows? Worth a shot. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Mike Lee. Thank you, thank you Mr Chairman. Um, I'm, I'm supporting the amendment because it um, merely restates what Auckland Council policy is. Unfortunately, um, the report didn't look at the um, report that went to the Transport Committee in 2011 and the, and the resolutions um, that came out of that. There's, there seemed to be an amnesia there, unfortunately. Um, Mr Chairman, I, I'm supporting passenger rail um, between Hamilton and Auckland on principle, more than on principle. We already have, um, if we were to vote against that, we, we would actually be voting against having the Northern Explorer um, service, which runs between Auckland and Hamilton and Wellington, indeed. Um, putting Wellington up there may be too radical, but um, <laughs> it's sensible because it counterbalances the wet blanket C, C, uh, B and, and, and C um, recommendations, which don't add anything at all, and actually, um, in terms of rolling stock, I would argue are, are factually incorrect. So uh, it's in principle, um, and, and I think that um, we should support it in principle for obvious reasons. That's council policy after all. Thank you. Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Mr Chair. I actually support the amendment more than I support the substantive, um, and merely because um, the amendment just deals with a future thinking for this council, where we believe it should go. I mean, the problem with the substantive is that we don't seem to have a lot of support from the Waikato. And so you can't deal with a, another council, you've got to talk about yourself. And I suppose the thing that bothers me about the substantive is that um, we've already got an ATAP agreement that we're hundreds of millions exactly. behind. Million. And we need to focus on that which we've already prioritised and agreed. So for me, supporting the amendment is actually as good as I'm going to get. And I think it's great because I think that's probably where we should go long term. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Cashmore. Oh, thanks, Mr Chair. <clears throat> so a huge dose of reality has to be put onto this, and I'm not against any of what's up there, but we have to bear in mind that we're going into our LTP discussion starting next week or very soon after that. And you know, bearing in mind the $700 million per year gap we have in the funding model for transport per se, mm. and you add to this the Kiwi Rail funding that's required. Um, so is this a priority for Auckland? I would suggest no, it's not. No, no um, it is. The, getting greater funding is a priority. And you think about the freight movements. So you've got the two container ports, one north of Hamilton and one south of Manukau. The movement of those empty containers from Tauranga and Auckland backwards and forwards on those lines. If you're going to have an express rail service, you're going to have to build a third track yep. to Papakura and then a fourth track to Auckland. Mm. You are talking billions yep. of dollars. Electrification south to Pukekohe and further up northwest. We have a problem on the northwest line with a tunnel. We're talking 136 million just to go to Puki. Kiwi Rail's going to pay for that. We're still going to fork up with the 36 million for the stations. And then what would that tunnel cost to improve? And we need more electrified motor units and hybrid ones of that. 150 million there. And then we have the major arterial upgrades that we've all seen focused on through the ATAP process. So yes, this would be wonderful in the Christmas tree list, but that's what it is, it's a Christmas tree list. Until we get the funding for the Upper North Island infrastructure sorted, this is a low priority. And um, nothing I'd love to see it more than a high priority and a whiz-bang, fast-track train from Hamilton to Auckland or beyond. But we have a lot of work to do as a nation first before we even think about it. Thank you. Councillor Hills? Can I make an uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm kind of speaking to both, and, and Bill stole some of my lines. But um, first of all, just thank you, Megan. I know you're doing 110,000 
other things in planning for the LTP. So thank you for fitting this in and trying to get a bit of a high-level report done. But, um, yeah, I of course I support the idea of it. Um, and it's sort of, you know, I wouldn't vote against E because then I'm on the books saying I'm against it. But it's the, the fact is that we made some massive decisions on Thursday. We're going to have to make another huge number of decisions for the LTP that are going to be removing things from our budget. Um, we also need to raise revenue. And for other people, I talked about the domino effect of our decisions. You know, decisions we made last week about raising extra revenue and other people didn't want to raise extra revenue, things like that. Um, but now we're going to add this to our books as well when we have a between 4 to $7 billion hole in the current budget of current projects. So I just don't want to mislead people when the, the news comes out today or tomorrow or something that, yep, Auckland Council supports a, a commuter rail service between Hamilton and Auckland and everyone celebrates and then realistically it's 50 years down the track because we actually do not have the money. So although I support this, I want us to be sure that we're actually looking for the evidence and the details and what it looks like. We do have a passenger rail service from Auckland to Hamilton. It takes two and a half hours. It costs about 30 bucks or something and it happens once a day. So we also need to know if we're actually, what this means, is it high speed rail? Is it, what, what is it? If it's a real commuter thing, it's gonna be very, very expensive. Bang. And we also can't just keep shoving more trains onto our current network that we know even with the city rail link is gonna be pretty chocker full pretty fast. So, you know, I just worry that we, we say these things, it's all, you know, patting ourselves on the back and then the, the realistic thing comes back to people that we actually can't do it and there's no plan for it. So, um, yes, it's, it's good to support and I wanna see what kind of plan puts in, but I really think this is something the government needs to step up and, and fund. It can't, this can't be just from us um, all the time. Other areas around the country have 100% have funding from government on, on projects like this. And this is a strategic project for the country, not so much for Auckland with all the other pressures we have. So I will be supporting it, but I, it's hard when it's so black and white um, like this that we're giving maybe Aucklanders or Hamiltonians a false sense of what we're actually going to do. So... Yeah, I, I'm keen to see the work done so we can put it out there, but it's also making sure that we don't just jump out there tomorrow and say, yay, we're getting rail to Hamilton, when realistically we, we are not with things like the North Western Bus Way, North Shore Rail, Airport Rail, a whole of other things we've got to do. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Collins. Thanks, sir. I just wanted to support uh, the uh, corridor that you gave, but I, I'm supporting, uh, going to support the amendment on the basis that it's in principle. I think uh, some of the concerns that I think I'm hearing is the way in which, if this was to go through, people, the messaging would happen, and I think we've got to be really careful around that on that point. Um, I think the, the discussion has moved into priorities, but I think this is an in principle discussion. And the other thing I'm, I'm cognizant of is uh, when... Uh, the guest, Rob, was talking about having moved to Hamilton. I'm thinking of the numerous lower socioeconomic status families <coughs> in South Auckland and Manuko and Manurewa, those parts, who are moving out of this city into Hamilton because it's more affordable. And a lot of them are keeping their jobs and are trying to get back into the city for work. So I'm, I think we should be cognizant of those uh, folk as well because there is a... a, a a very soft form, if I could put it that way, of gentrification such that our affordability prices in this city are so high that more and more families are moving out of places like Ōtara, Papatoetoe, Māngere and into Hamilton. And I know numerous families myself who have left our churches and gone uh, into Hamilton. They're going, to be, they're going to need to get back. So I'm just thinking that's an important part of the discussion to keep in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Good points. Councillor Filipina. Thank you, Chair. Um, <coughs> I'm going to talk to the amendment as we should be, <laughs> and then I'm just going to have a, a just just a general one, so then I don't have to talk when we come to the substantive. Feel free. Just just only the once is good. So look, um, chair, just just in regards to uh, my colleague uh, to my left, um, I my, my my brother's in Hamilton, um, but I don't have a conflict because he's moving back to Auckland. Just in case people think that I have. Um, but I totally agree in regards to uh, our, our families moving down there. Now, in regards to the amendment, I will be supporting the amendment because even though it's, it's in principle, 
we also need to be cognizant of it because all the material, the information is going to come back to us. And as far as I'm concerned, that's when all the detail around um, um, when this could possibly happen, what's changed since 2011, uh, the passenger numbers, and if you go through our attachment day, there's, there's, there's um, some projections in there. Um, and, and this is not a Christmas present. This is the, the whole issue for me. This is not a Christmas present for people. It's actually giving our staff and, and those, even with the, the other councils, time to do a report to update 2011, to then come back with, 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 with recommendations to, to us, as well as the other councils, and saying, hey, if we're going to have a look at it, fine, this is what we're going to do. So I've got no issues with thee. And, I mean, I, again, and the reason I mentioned uh, Minister Bridges is because uh, uh, that, that statement that he put in there in May, you know, around it, if the proposal was sound business case, commercially viable, and was supported by key stakeholders. I mean, <coughs> A will end up bringing that back to us. So I am supporting E, but also supporting A Street to D as well, and I won't be saying anything afterwards. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Philippina. Councillor Cooper. Um, I'm just really confused, Mr Chairman, because everybody's speaking to everything, so I may as well just speak now and then I won't need to speak Abs if yes. it's substantive. Look, members, there's always crossovers, so feel yeah. free to speak My to apologies. a lot. No, that's, that's no, absolutely fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, so just, I mean, I, I absolutely support what Councillor Hills is saying. I mean, it's a great idea, but I think we very easy to lead people astray. And of course I'll probably be marked down as not supporting public transport. I absolutely do. Um, I mean, the reality is we've got a lot of projects. You know, we've been banging on about rail to Kumu for years and we're getting no traction, and that makes much more sense. Councillors Watson and Walker want Penlink. We can't even get that. Um, you know, electrification to Pokakoi. Now, I've just been dealing with a very bereaved family who've lost their boy um, killed on a train track, and so I've been doing a lot of investigations to how much it's going to cost us because we have to pay for modifications to the Kiwi Rail network, not Kiwi Rail. We pay for that. Our ratepayers pay for it. So everybody that thinks, oh, you do that, all along the country, local councils pay for what they want. And we have still 71 rail crossings that don't have electronic barriers for pedestrians. Mm -hmm. So that's going to cost $44 million over the next four years, and we don't have it. And I don't want to see another kid killed. I do not. I do not, do not want to hear that one of my constituents is sleeping on his boy's grave. Literally. So for me, those are the pressing issues. We've got to make our rail network safe. We've also got to make it work for our commuters because I use my husband as a test for a lot of the things we do because we don't always agree, but he seems to me to be very um, representative of a lot of people that vote, like... What the beep, beep, beep are we doing that for people in Ham Hamilton for? We haven't done it for the people in Auckland yet. Mm. And I don't think our ratepayers thank us. And, of course, everybody throws away a line, oh, it'd be great. Of course it would be great. But actually let that count those councils do it. You know, of course, if they want to lead the charge, go for it. We can work with them, of course. But I just see that this is just another thing, a nice thing to do, the people that do this sort of stuff get the headlines every time. You know, great idea, but then we let people down and we don't do it. And so for me, I'm really, really keen to be funding what we need to fund. Rail safety, get our current networks going well. You know, it's 12, it's something like 12 bucks to get, get a bus down to Tauranga. And it's about the same to get it um, to to Hamilton. The other issue we talk about is, is it going to be commercially viable? Hey, look, let's get real. None of our public transport is commercially viable. No. We barely get 50% fare box return. We subsidise it. So everybody that pays rates, and mostly in rent, actually, in Auckland, because it all goes to the rates, pays for our public transport system, whether they use it or not. And so the reality of this ever being commercially viable is a bit of a pipe dream. <coughs> because no one ever wants to pay the true cost of anything, and that's what always happens. So 
if somebody can make it pay and people are willing to pay it to get from Auckland to Hamilton, well, great, that's fantastic. But for me, I just don't want to send our staff doing all this work, another report, and then we don't do anything. <coughs> and people will call me mean spirit or whatever. But if we had bucket loads of money, even to do our own stuff, I'd be ecstatic. And even more so if we could do this for Hamilton. But there's more benefits to Hamilton than there is to Auckland. And the other thing that really gets gets up my goat, as uh, they say in Australia, is, um, you know, cool. that region, Waikato region are building right on the edge of their region, yes. and the people that live there use the facilities in Auckland. And I was talking to a lady the other day who lives in Pocono, and I said, well, where do, where's your kind of place you hang out? Oh, Pocky, yeah, that's where I do everything, you know, because, and I can go to the library and, you know, they get the free swimming pools, take the kids to the pools, the whole deal. And they don't pay the rates. And so for me, I just think it's a betrayal, a little bit of a betrayal of our own ratepayers. So that's why I can't support any of these, Mr Chairman, I'm afraid. OK. Councillor Sir John Walker. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I'd hate to see us chuck us out this morning without giving it further, further credit. I mean, everything's in the hard, too hard basket at the moment because of lack of money. But if we wipe this, the idea's gone forever. Kiwi Rail coming to Auckland every day. So why not put a few little carriages on the back end to see if it works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sir John. And Councillor Sharon Stewart. OK. <clears throat> I'm actually going to support this because um, we see that, that Auckland it will be a low, low priority to Auckland at this point and um, support in principle. But I think we really need to, to wait until maybe even 2018 until we have the census so we can actually find out exactly how many people are actually um, commuting um, into the city, into, the, in, into Auckland from Hamilton. Um, I don't think we've probably got enough uh, statistics on that and, and the census is in March 2018 and I think you know, and I, and I sort of agree with everybody around the table here, but I, I, I think because we've got that it's a low priority at this point in time, I, I can sort of live with it. So I will support the recommendations here. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor. And Councillor Wayne Walker. Sure. I, I support uh, this in principle. Uh, one of the things that we have to do as a council is forward think. If we take an incremental approach based on what we can afford now, according to our LTP, we'll never see the difference between where we need to be and where we are now. Circumstances could change with governments. A change in government might mean a change in funding. We can't second guess that. There are many changes that are happening across technology. I say again that much of the work around this could be done outside of council if we put together a collaborative team, a steering group. There would be many parties interested in engaging in this kind of work. We have to think outside of the square and do things differently if we're going to accelerate forward thinking. So I support this in principle. Why wouldn't you? Thank you. I'll put the amendment to the vote. That's what we've been discussing primarily. Um, by division. Thank you. By division. I'll take a division. Moved by Councillor Casey, seconded by Councillor Lee. And the motion is, it's just gone off my screen, support in principle the provision of passenger rail service between Hamilton and Auckland. And it won't be just one way, it'll go the other way as well, I imagine. So. Um, Home again. Home again. Oh. <laughs> between is the operative word, Mr Chairman. <laughs> By division, Councillor Darby. Four. Councillor Casey. Yes. Deputy Mayor Cashmore. Four. <coughs> Councillor Collins. Four. Councillor Cooper. Four. Mm. Councillor Philippina. That's all. Aye. Councillor Fletcher. Yes. Member Henry. Yep. Councillor Hills. Yes. Councillor Holth. Aye. Councillor Denise Lee. Four. Councillor Mikeley. Aye. Member Narmanay. Aye. Councillor Newman. Against. Councillor Simpson. Yes. Councillor Stewart. Or. Councillor Sir John Walker. Or. Councillor Wayne Walker. Yes. Councillor Watson. Yes. Councillor Lee. Yes. Councillor Cooper. 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 Yes. Councillor Coo
carried. Declare that carried. Thank you, members. It'll be now incorporated. Um, and so we've got the main motions um, overwhelming. on the table now. And look, I didn't speak to those main motions. With all I, my friends. I did raise this matter of, of rail connectivity in our Auckland Plan refresh workshop. Um, I mean, ultimately, I foresee not just ordinary uh, slow rail as we've got at the moment. There will be fast rail in New Zealand. And probably the, the, fast, the first fast rail connection, and it'll be some years out, will be Hamilton to Auckland. And I'm talking barrelling under the Bombays, not going via Pukekohe. That is conceivable. We just don't think of it. But if you look in Europe at the moment, any journey under 1,000 kilometres has been taken by ultra-fast rail over air. And that was due to the vision of the European Union to connect cities. We underestimate the importance of not just Auckland. I think yeah. all of us here have got to look beyond the political um, geopolitical boundaries of Auckland. We've got to start looking at Hamilton and understanding Hamilton, understanding what Hamilton can offer us and we can offer to Hamilton. It's, it's, a, it's an economic anchor, that whole Waikato Basin right around Hamilton, reaching eastwards towards the Bay of Plenty. We really do not understand Northland that well as well. Yeah. I think we've been very isolated in our view of Auckland. Auckland is connected every day by people driving from Whangarei, driving from Hamilton, driving from the Bay of Plenty. They arrive on the southern motorways, the northern motorway. They, they are part of that congestion. It is not just Aucklanders. It is, we're draining the brains of Hamilton to lift our economic viability and vice, and, and vice versa. The, there is a relationship which I think we need to understand. My first priority, though, is still mass transit in Auckland in, in the, at the core going forward. I want to see rail from Albany under the harbour, city centre, yeah. light rail, out to the airport, looping around Manukau, yeah, up yeah. through Botany, terminating in Pam Muir. That light rail circuit, that will be a priority for me over this with respect going forward. But that doesn't mean to say we ignore Hamilton, the Waikato, the Bay of Plenty. Um, I'm very aware that there's been a lot of NZTA money going into uh, state highway improvements, and you've just seen this massive sprawl, very, in my view, uneconomic sprawl into the northern Waikato area. Very much single, um, single dwellings in their standard sort of 600, 800 metre section. Uh, a very car dependent North Waikato there is now. They, that road network bypasses a number of towns. Uh, it bypasses P Pocono, it bypasses Huntley, it bypasses Tirao and Narawahia. Those towns have huge urban regeneration potential housing for Aucklanders and Hamiltonians if they were regenerated if connected via rail. I'm not suggesting it's going to be in the next five or ten years. Uh, could be in ten years, but I would expect it will definitely be in the in the ten to twenty years. You will see rail connectivity from Hamilton to Auckland. So I'm lending my support to this. I um, will will examine this further as we get the pre-feasibility back. Um, but I think there is a a lot of merit in proceeding slowly and surely on this route. Councillor Mike Lee. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I, I find myself largely in agreement with you. Except for the light rail component. You, right? you know the bit <laughs> I don't agree with. Um, <laughs> the, the, question, the, the report, I'm just addressing the report, Mr. Chairman. And the, re the report um, um, uh, quotes the, the, the Waikato Regional Council re report, which I have to say is suboptimal to say the least, and I suspect there have been inputs from, from uh, quarters w which I won't mention. Um, however, um, the conclusion that there's been no real change in the transport policy context since 2011 is completely wrong. Now, Mr Chairman, I represented this council and Auckland Transport, the Board of Auckland Transport, in the series of talks that went on in 2011. And members of the Transport Committee will recall the report backs we had of that process. 
yes. um, and the resolutions that are that are on the books. Um, I'm not going to go too much into uh, that uh, process. Um, however, um, there were shortcomings, and at the end of the process, I concluded there was an unwillingness, not just from Auckland, Auckland Transport in particular, but actually um, the Waikato uh, councils, to be frank. However, um, what has changed since 2011? Well, congestion and emissions of, of tra traffic coming into Auckland has changed significantly. The population has changed significantly. The CRL was a hope in 2011. <coughs> the CRL is becoming a fact right now. And the CRL is not just about up and down ha um, Albert Street. It will achieve a major strategic improvement to the efficiency of how rail operates in Auckland. 30,000 passengers an hour going through Brutamart. Uh, Mr Chairman, in terms of, of uh, dealing with um, how we um, achieve rail services, we do have existing rail services between Hamilton and Auckland, they are minimal, to improve rail services between Hamilton in Auckland, I believe there are, are two approaches. One um, is a tr strategic approach, linking um, the electrification of Pukekohe with the extending that to Tarapa and therefore the rest of the North Island main trunk line. Factoring in the enormous challenge and problem mm. that we are facing and will face um, with traffic and um, movements at Auckland International Airport and factoring in that being 60 kilometres, 20, 20 kilometres closer to Hamilton than the Auckland CBD and factoring that challenge as a, 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 a possible um, opportunity. <coughs> in terms of the report again, uh, there is a, a bold statement, no suitable rolling stock, please. There's 104, 104 SASD carriages sitting down at Tamaranui, which Auckland Transport, having slashed the price, was still unable to sell to a, a buyer in Africa. And so they're sitting there available for New Zealand Inc. How many, Mike? 104. And don't forget, this council paid for the last of them in 2000, introduced the last of them in 2011. They're not that old at all. They'll last for another 50 years. They could do the job very well indeed. Now, to the next point, and that is the uh, non-strategic accretional approach, which I d believe is feasible. Again, as uh, factoring this into the Southern Initiative and all that means, linked between Hamilton and Auckland and the, and the so-called Golden Triangle. Presently, there is a cross-platform connection, a, a, a diesel shuttle running from Pukekohe to Papakura. It would be quite easy, easy to extend that to Tuakau, at least, um, a, a, as a, a way of, of starting this. This is a, an accretional improvement, not a strategic a solution, but certainly one that would work and would certainly take pressure off the, the, the um, car parking at, at, at Pukekohe and, and Papakura. So I support this. I believe that um, our challenge we have with Auckland International Airport um, could also provide a solution to, for Hamilton. Um, as I think Councillor Walker has mentioned, it all depends on government priorities. Councillor Cashmore has raised the, the problem, almost nonsensical pr problem we have with our rail network taken up with, with shuttling containers between Auckland and Tauranga and back again, which is the most pointless waste of time and economic effort I've ever heard of, and that has to be sorted out. Yeah, that yeah. is completely crazy. Yeah. But we need to do better w with what we have. We need to realise that the CRL is bigger than all of us really think or appreciate, and that prov helps provide a solution
to Hamilton, uh, helps provide a solution to Auckland International Airport. We need helps provide a solution for further electrification of the North Island main trunk line from Papakura to Tarapa. I think we need to put all that together and, and, and think more strategically, Mr Chairman. I think there are solutions there, um, and um, I, I support this. Can I just make it sound a, a note of caution? The last time this effort failed was, wasn't just physical. There were physical constraints, there's no doubt about that. Physical constraints with the state of the track, um, which, which needs to be upgraded. There were, there were physical constraints with rolling stock and the price that Kiwi Rail were asking to hire their, the old silver fern, old banger. Um, but we have plenty of rolling stock available right now. Um, but the, so we can certainly deal with the physical constraints. That's not to belittle them. They, there is a challenge there. Um, the other problem, though, is an attitudinal one. What I found, to be frank with you, Mr Chairman and members, is that Auckland Transport were not interested, interested in having any Hamilton trains coming into Auckland, but there's ways and means of getting around that with cross-platform transfers. And the other one is that at that time, in 2011, the Waikato councils were not willing really to put any serious money in at all and had the, the forlorn hope of thinking that the people of Auckland would pay for everything. If we get around those constraints, um, I'm sure we can make great progress here. So I support the study. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. I'll, I'll, put, I'll put those motions in, as you can see, and it's A through to E. No. Uh, all those in favour say aye. 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 Uh, contrary, no. 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 Uh, declare that carried. Thank you. Members, I've had a request for a, um, more regular breaks, but I would like to proceed with the next two items and then we're complete with the... Um, well, we'll see how we go, but we're, then we'll be complete with the uh, open agenda. And so I believe they're reasonably straightforward, but that's normally uh, red rag to a bull, isn't it? Yep. So um, Don't even go, yeah. I will go to the next item.